Our 50 Laboratories of Democracy provide an amazing American success story, which provides necessary public policy competition and innovation. It's been a major curb on bad public policy and a massive driver of the tax free market policy successes that have produced incredible prosperity for citizens and states that get it right. American state policymakers are realizing that the laws of economics apply regardless of party affiliation. Last year, Connecticut lawmakers took a small step to improve their state's anti-competitive tax system and declining economy by providing $350 million in personal income tax cuts. The Constitution state put more money back into taxpayers' pockets. In the ultra-high tax Northeast, moves like these can help attract migration from neighboring states. State leaders are also rightly concerned with improving Connecticut's overall fiscal health. Governor Ned Lamont, a Democrat, has noted the state's growing unfunded pension liabilities for government workers. He recently cited our research from the American Legislative Exchange Council, which found that Connecticut had the highest per capita unfunded pension liabilities in the Northeast and the fifth highest in the nation. While Connecticut has many problems still to fix, this is a breath of fresh air that Governor Lamont and some legislator leaders say that they're acknowledging the problems in one of America's bluest states. Likewise, policymakers in deep blue Hawaii appear to have also caught on to the many benefits of state tax cuts. Earlier this week, Governor Josh Green, a Democrat, signed legislation that is being hailed as the largest income tax cut in state history. Over the coming years, it will amount to a $5.6 billion reduction in tax collections. Governor Green rightly recognizes the boost such a policy will have to individuals and businesses in the state. He noted that many will use their savings on, quote, local businesses, on their rent, on cars, and their health care needs, end quote. The governor added that over the long term, the tax cuts may lead to savings on welfare programs. When people are able to pay themselves more and to keep their own, their own money, they get off of state welfare and reducing state spending on those programs. This is cheerful news from Blue State America. Given all of this, it's hard to imagine that some states think they can tax their way to prosperity and create wealth by increasing government involvement in the economy. Not all is cheerful, as this news doesn't seem to have made it to Sacramento. California's leaders remain in a battle over how to address a budget deficit. Of course, that budget deficit was caused by their infamously bad tax and spending approach, and that deficit now is in the tens of billions of dollars. Legislators and the governor, first and foremost, can't even figure out how deep of a hole they're in, let alone how to dig themselves out of it. Billions have been spent on high-speed rail, homelessness, and countless big government pet projects. The state has some of the highest tax rates in the nation and remains stuck in the bottom of Rick State's Fourth State Index. Its revenue shortfalls are in part due to the massive outmigration from the state in recent years. Since 2013, more than 2 million Californians have picked up and moved to one of the other 49 states. The news also doesn't seem to have made it to Illinois. We've seen similar outmigration trends to California, and policymakers' response has been to increase spending in taxes. Lawmakers seeking to find more revenue whether wherever they can recently hiked taxes on sports betting from 15% way up to 40%, making the state's rate some of the highest in the country. Why does Illinois have a deficit? Well, since 2019, despite losing more than half a million residents to out-migration, the state's budget has grown by nearly one-third. Will leaders in California and, or Illinois take a hint from Hawaii and Connecticut? recognizing that high taxes have strangled economic growth, businesses, and families? Or will they continue down their current path, moving taxes ever higher and pursuing more residents who going to other states for opportunities? Well, only time will tell. It is clear overspending isn't just a massive problem in Washington, D.C. It's a major problem in many states as well. However, despite relentless inflation and overspending, there are signs of optimism as even Democrat states like Connecticut and Hawaii are recognizing economic reality. And we can thank state policy competition in our 50 laboratories of democracy for that. For more information, you can go to alec.org. For American Radio Journal, I'm Jonathan Williams. Thanks for listening.